This Saturday morning action cartoon review comes from Z Michael. And thank you for the request. Something I really dig are cartoons and animation in general. There's just so much more you can do with a piece of animation than you could with a high budget film, television show, or a comic book. Animation is a very difficult medium to break into, especially due to how bad a lot of animators get treated. However, animation can definitely be a rewarding thing to a lot of people when you get the right animation team, the right vision, the right characters, and the right story, then you can have a show that just feels right. For a lot of people, it could be something like Rick and Morty, Spectacular Spider-Man, or Samurai Jack. For me, there was always one show I've always felt was overlooked. I saw the show when it first aired on Fox Kids way back in 2000, and since then, it's been one of those shows that stuck with me. Heck, I even remembered its name. And there were some shows from my childhood where sometimes I couldn't remember the name. Yet, Cyber 6 was one of those shows that's been burned into my brain for nearly two decades. And that's saying a whole lot, considering how few people rarely talk about it. Despite this, there was just something special about this show. Cyber 6 was one of those shows that was just so alien. It's a cyberpunk superhero series, yet it has elements of other genres as well, such as horror and comedy. Heck, one episode was one big homage to Alfred Hitchcock's magnum opus, The Birds. Cyber 6 was a group project between different countries, Canada, Argentina, and Japan. Cyber 6 started life as a cyberpunk superhero comic under the same name, and was eventually adapted into a short live-action show, and with what little clips I could find were just terrible. It's like someone massed together the crow and Batman and Robin into an unholy abomination. The suit was pretty bad, the action scenes were pretty atrocious, and everything else was just low budget. Few clips of this show exist online, some of which have their own audio claim. Honestly, I can kind of respect that. If I can let a train wreck like this get made, I'd probably try to get rid of all the traces of it. But thankfully, Cyber 6 got another, and far more faithful adaption down the road. Cyber 6 has a human alter ego so she can hide it from Vulgar Wagner's mutants during the day, while carrying out her vignette actions against them at night. Cyber 6 has a small yet interesting cast of characters. Lucas stands as one of my favorites, being a teacher who can hold his own in a fight. There's also Data 7, Cyber 6's sidekick, brother, and an actual panther. That's right, Von Wagner had placed the mind of a Cyber 6's deceased brother into the body of a Black Panther. With the body of a ferocious jungle beast, he was used by Von Wagner to wipe out his enemies. He then is snapped back into his senses by Cyber 6 and very quickly becomes a supporting sidekick. What is of importance is Jose, Von Wagner's clone son. Yes, the mad scientist has a son, who also has a clone of himself. I kind of like Jose. Despite the fact that he can be an annoying kid sometimes, at least Jose is able to be somewhat of a threat at times, though that's more due to the monsters and Von Rachel making fun of him. Now, judging by what I told you, you're probably thinking, wow, that sounds like an interesting plot. Well, that's not entirely true. Sure, the setup for some of the lore are deep, but you really need to watch three episodes to get the gist of the entire plot. The episodes you need to see are episode 1, 2, and 13. The other 10 episodes were Monster of the Week shenanigans that focus on one-shot characters. If you were to skip these 10 filler episodes though, you'd be missing almost a lot of the best parts of the show. You see, this show is a Monster of the Week series that is done amazingly well. A lot of these scenarios presented in the episodes are done well and handled pretty expertly. Characters that only appear once are interesting, such as the investigator as Yashimoto. Now, I've seen some video reviews out there that seem too harsh, a lot on the fact that Cyber 6 isn't as dark as the comics. They were annoyed that it was dumbed down for kids, which I disagree with. If you want dumbed down for kids, watch Teen Titans Go! Cyber 6 is lighter and softer than the original, but it keeps the elements of what makes the comic darker. The show hints greatly at these dark elements, without outright revealing them. For example, the show shows bits and pieces of Cyber 29's death, hints at the fate of what happened to the other Cybers, and even touches on Jose's neo-Nazi upbringing in a way that is left purposefully vague. This means that the show has a hidden layer of depth to it. The problem is you need to read a lot of the comic to understand this depth, 
which is in Spanish. As a lot of the backstory is left purposefully vague in the series. Still, Cyber 6 remains an interesting series with some dark elements here and there. Sadly, the show was cancelled on a huge cliffhanger in the end. The show was planned for two seasons, but the second season was cancelled due to production problems, thus leaving the show end on a huge cliffhanger in the end. Hopefully, one day someone can reboot the series, and hopefully that show could be as good if not better. Now, if you're planning on watching the show for the first time, make sure you watch the first two episodes. The show is very background heavy, so seeing these episodes will help you understand the world and characters. If you're interested in watching weird 90s sci-fi superhero shows, I'd say give it a watch. Cyber 6 gets an 8.7 out of 10. This is Red Wolf signing out, and I'll see you next time. Peace.